Up YouTube, let's check out some of these NBA players, like why they got these tattoos they have. Look at this, Dame Dalla. I don't have no tattoos, I don't think I'll ever will get one. Because it's low-key a lot of money, and I just don't want to look dumb with some dumb tattoo on me. Are you behind them? Well, for LaMelo Ball, his tattoos are actually illegal. See, growing up, what? LaMelo was Illegal? inspired by his older brothers. He looked up to them. They were, you know, his role models. And He's when like, both of his older brothers got tattoos saying, fear God, LaMelo, he wanted to fit in. So he decided, man, I'm going to get a fear God tattoo. But at the time, LaMelo was only 17 years old. So when his dad, LaVar, found out, he was pissed. I mean, LaVar nearly beat this kid's ass. You got the real tats on there, dog. Are you kidding me? Let me see them things on your arm. Dude, what does that say? Fear. And what's the other one? God. How about you fear me if I choke the hell out of you for getting <laughs> them goddamn tattoos? Damn, LeVar, what the hell? You, you Homer Simpson over here gonna choke your son out over some ink? Uh, you little... Imagine <laughs> 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 just the mother. <laughs> Too far. Or... Is it? Let's jump into an alternate universe. <laughs> where LeVar was all good with the tattoos. Well, Lamelo was still a minor, and in the state of California, it's completely illegal to get tattoos under 18, even if you got a parent's permission. Like, this is so serious. The tattoo artist that did these could get arrested and face up to six oh, wow. months in prison. But I guess if you got enough money to whip a Lambo at 16, you ain't gotta worry about the police. And Lamelo went on to prove this by getting another tattoo. Damn. But this time, it was kind of. He's talking to his brother. Behind his dad's back again, Lamelo went to famous tattoo artist Herschel L. Carrasco and got another illegal piece done. This tattoo was done across Lamelo's chest, repping his high school jersey number one. And when Herschel posted this really? on Instagram, Lamelo got his ass roasted. Like, one dude even said, this might be the worst tattoo ever. <laughs> Damn, I didn't think it was that bad. But I mean, who am I to say? I got the damn rebound logo tatted on my forehead. Told you, man, I'm promoting this thing everywhere. <laughs> but uh, it turns out even LaMelo was actually embarrassed about the new ink. So he tried to keep it low key. But his dad ain't stupid. And when LeVar found out about this one, he was ready to kick LaMelo to the streets. You know, I don't like tattoos. So I guess when we get back home, you got somewhere else to stay because I ain't let you stay in my house with that all over your chest. Because I told you, if you're living in my presence, you better live my way. <laughs> now, you'd think LaMelo would be afraid of his dad, but clearly not because he kept That's getting more tattoo. tattoos. And in March of 2020, LaMelo copped a new sky the limit is piece on his left leg. The tattoo was this galaxy theme, had an astronaut, a rocket ship, and it repped his MB1 signature sneakers. And like, I don't care what anyone says, this one's actually fire. But LaMelo was finished there. Just a few months later, LaMelo went out and got his 10th tattoo. Just think about that. This dude's like 18 years old and he's got more tattoos than most NBA players. <laughs> and this time he got a lion reflecting a cub with the text of one of one. And I know what you're what thinking. The what the hell does it This one is actually his most meaningful one yet. It represents how far he's come and the beast that he's turned into. And now that LaMelo was 18, he was old enough to make his own decisions. And with his brothers completely covered in ink as well, LaVar's opinion on tattoos actually started to change. I've never been a tattoo man. Time has changed and that's what these guys do. The stuff that he put on on his body, he put it there for a reason. To remind him of certain things, I guess. So I was like, you know what, I'm over it. <laughs> it's like, look at that. What? It's, it's cool for you. If that's the way you gotta deal with that. That's it. funny. That's my man, LaVar. I knew you'd come around. Now, LaMelo, he's just an NBA rookie trying to fit in with his brothers. Kobe, though, if it weren't for his first tattoo, the Kobe oh, that we know and love today Maybe now it said that. would have never happened. See, back in 2003, during Kobe's playoff run, he suffered a knee injury that required surgery. So later in June, he flew to Edwards, Colorado to meet with a knee specialist. This is where he'd end up checking into the lodge and spa hotel. And it was here that Kobe hooked up with the concierge. Now he was just uh, a young, famous NBA player concierge. trying to have a good time, right? 
Oh, this well, dude's been my favorite player point, until this. Kobe was this incident happened. already married to Vanessa Bryant, so he literally cheated on his wife. And to make things worse, that concierge that Kobe cheated with came out and accused him of the most serious allegation a woman can accuse a man with. So, of course, with Kobe being a celebrity, this turned into the biggest scandal in NBA history. Kobe's image was ruined and seemed like he was about to lose everything. Everything except for his wife, Vanessa. Even though the evidence proved that she was cheated on, she was still in love with Kobe, and she stuck by his side through it all. The case lasted over a year, and oh, eventually whole thing was crazy. settled outside of court. With that, Kobe was beyond thankful. You know, this could have ruined his career and life. And honestly, if it wasn't for Vanessa, he wouldn't have been able to get through it. She could have easily just up and left, leaving Kobe a heartbroken mess. And he realized that. And not only that, he felt unbearable guilt. So he had to make it up to her. And that's when he realized exactly what he needed to do to make permanently tattooed her name onto his right arm. And in a 2003 interview, after he got the ink, Kobe told her, you're my backbone, you're a blessing, you're a piece of my heart, you're the air that I breathe, you're the strongest person I know, and I'm so sorry for putting you and our family through this. Obviously, this tattoo meant so much to Kobe, but what you need to understand is, this was his first tattoo ever, so it was really from the heart. And that same yeah. year, Kobe kept adding to the tattoo. He added angel wings to represent divine love and a butterfly crown to represent respect. So it was obvious Kobe was trying to prove to Vanessa that he made a mistake and she truly meant the world to him. I mean, she was so important to him that he didn't get another tattoo until over a decade later in 2017. <laughs> but this one ended up being even more important. Kobe went on to honor his daughters by adding all three of their names to that same arm. His family meant everything to him. And at the beginning of 2020, Kobe was looking to finish the sleeve with his newly born daughter's name, Capri. He set up an uh -huh. appointment for February 5th, 2020. But just two weeks before his appointment, Kobe got into a helicopter with his daughter, Gianna. And this was the last time anyone would see either of them alive. Now, uh, I, I know it's tough to hear about Kobe, so I'm going to try and lighten the mood a little bit. All right, we, we need to switch gears. This next NBA player, Jason Terry, he literally predicted the future of the NBA with his tattoos. This dude's ink is <laughs> freaky, man. See, back in 2010, Terry and the Mavericks just got knocked out of the playoffs in the first round, and the team needed some motivation. So, Eric. during the offseason, when the team was training, Deshaun Stevenson invited the boys over to his house to get inked up by his personal tattoo artist. Yeah, this man literally had a tattoo artist on call. But, see, up until this point, the Mavericks had never won a championship. That's Sean Mary. Ever. Yeah. And neither had Terry. But, for some reason, that night, Terry decided to get the championship trophy tatted on his right bicep. <laughs> this man's got no championships. The Mavericks never won a championship. What the hell was this dude thinking? Like, if the Mavericks don't win, Terry's gonna be walking around with an NBA Finals trophy on his right arm for the rest of life without a ring to show for it. <laughs> Even his teammate Deshaun admitted, when he first got the tattoo, I said he was crazy. Well, fast forward to June and the Mavericks somehow pulled off an upset against the Heat, beating them four to two in the finals. And they won the Larry O'Brien Trophy, the exact tattoo that Terry got. Somehow this man did it. He saved himself from becoming a meme for the rest of his <laughs> life. But I think Terry got a little too confident in his psychic abilities. Because uh, in the 2012 season, Terry did it again. Jason, what have you been up to this summer to get ready for next season? Well, I've just been sitting back, highly anticipating the day I put that uniform on. Oh, how excited am I? It's going to be fun. I believe we got great things ahead of us. But I have been a little busy getting a new tattoo. Let's see that. There it is. 
And why did you decide to get this tattoo? Well, obviously, you know, I did it uh, with the Mavericks before the season, the year we won it. And so hopefully this year, again, we'll have the luck of the leprechaun and we'll get it done again. I definitely believe last year they were right there. They're already a championship team. They just needed a little jet fuel. I mean, look, at least the first hat was just the trophy. Like, he could play it off for any team. But this man literally got the Celtics leprechaun <laughs> holding the trophy. So uh, chances I mean are... This isn't gonna end well, is it? And what do you know? Terry had the yeah. worst season of his entire career, and Boston was knocked out of the playoffs in the first round by the Knicks. The Knicks. <laughs> and that's when Terry realized he never dropped a like and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We yeah, got the power to make you like. lose to the Knicks. And trust me, hey, I'm man, Miller was on that team. So what are you doing? <clears throat> but. Anyways, oh, I think I show that. subscribe to Rebound, it all went downhill for his career from here. No more rings, no more trophies, and thank God, no more trophy tattoos. But John Wall, on the other hand, his tattoos are more than just ink. They tell what a story the story of how a kid from the hood made it all the way to the number one draft pick in the NBA. But as inspiring as it is, it's also a dark story. See, Wall grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina, an area surrounded by poverty and bad influences. And it didn't help that his father was sent to jail when Wall was just a year old. Left uh -huh. with a single mom, Wall's mother, Frances, wasn't left with many options. She ended up sacrificing her entire life, working three to four jobs just yeah. to put food on the table. And with Wall's childhood being such a struggle, it's what led to his first ever tattoo. He embraced where he's from, and he wanted it to be a part of him forever. So he went and got the skyline of Raleigh, North Carolina, and the 919 area code inked onto his abs. This was the place that he found his love for basketball. So it's no wonder he paid homage. And it's also where the bond between him and his mom grew strong. So for his next tattoo, he got his mother's name, Francis Pulley, with a handful of roses tatted on his chest. And above that, he got the words, Mama's Boy. And with his dad in jail, she was all he had. And this was even true for the short time that his dad was actually out of jail. See, when Wall was eight years old, his dad was finally released from jail. And this should have been great news. This would be the first time they could hang out together do father and son stuff, right? Well, the only reason Wall's dad was released from jail was that he was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. Oh. And he only had a month left to live. This kid went his entire life without his dad. And the second his dad was released from jail, the only thing Wall could do with him was just try to make his last days more comfortable kid learned at a young age that life is short and whatever you want out of this life you just gotta go chase it this was also the time that wall fell in love with basketball through difficult times like these that's what kept him going but as the days counted down eventually it happened wall's dad passed away in the hospital at only 52 years old Wall knew in his heart that one day he had to pay tribute to his father. And that's exactly what he did with his third tattoo. Inking on his chest a tattoo showing the two of them together, smiling, just like he remembered. But by the time he made it to high school, the loss of his dad made him bitter, angry, and it caused him to get into fights. Luckily though, Wall had some close friends to help keep him on the right path. These guys became friends for life and created a crew called 5D, which is exactly what Wall tattooed on his upper stomach. It reminded them that no matter where he is, his crew is always with him. And after getting his head on straight, he committed to the University of Kentucky and he had to make the best of this opportunity because this was his shot to show everyone he belonged in the NBA. So Wall teamed up with DeMarcus Cousins and Eric Bledsoe for a year, forming a super bond. They Man, they had all them team, people the on that team? Amigos. 
and that's why Wall got 3A for life tatted on his right collarbone. This one year at college put Wall and the three guys on every NBA team's radar, and it was becoming clear that his mom's sacrifices were finally paying off. And in 2010, Wall was drafted with the number one pick yeah. in the NBA draft. See, Wall looked at things like this. If his mom really put him in a position to make it to the NBA, he owed it to her to become great. So for the first few years of his career, Wall turned himself into one of the best point guards in the NBA. And he secured a $171 million contract. Jesus Christ, whoa, Damn. that's a lot of money, man. $171 <laughs> million. And he felt that he owed all of it to his mom's hard work and sacrifice. But just a few years later, in 2019, the most heartbreaking moment of Wall's life happened. And it led to his most important tattoo. Wall was out for the season after suffering devastating heel and Achilles injuries. And right before the February All-Star break, Wall got a phone call. Hi, this is Margaret, your dermatologist. That took the soul right out of his body. It was his mom, Frances, and she was in trouble. Over the last few months, Wall's mom was battling cancer. And the treatment she was undergoing just wasn't working. So deep down, Wall knew that she didn't have much time left. And that's when he decided that he should do one last thing as a tribute to her so that she could live on forever. And what better way to do that than get a tattoo? So later that February, Wall had the perfect idea for a tribute and eventually he ended up posting it to Instagram. It was a portrait of her face with the words, Dear Mama, and Wall captioned the post with a heart. As the months went on, his mom's condition got worse and worse. And eventually, Wall's phone rang again. But this time, it was the news he'd been dreading. His mom had lost the battle, and she passed away. But she still lives on to this day, through Wall's ink. His tattoos are some of the most meaningful we've seen yet, and there's honestly no topping them. But I, I just couldn't end this video without bringing up Kyrie Irving. Like, I don't know what's gotten crazier, him or his tattoos. <laughs> and it's weird because Kyrie came into the NBA as a clean cut guy. Yeah, he had some ink here and there, like his hungry and humble tattoo and his daughter Elizabeth's name on his chest. But in 2016, things started to get crazy. After a win, Kyrie posted a pic of him with a really odd tattoo. And he captioned the pic saying, Ham's a ham. But uh, fans immediately just blew up his comment section saying, Illuminati. I mean, it's literally a hand with a pyramid and an eye. But apparently, he said it has zero to do with the Illuminati. It's a symbol called the Hand of Fatima, which represents good health, and the hand is worn as a defense against negative energy. But this wasn't the only tattoo of his that sparked some conspiracies. During Kyrie's time with the Celtics, he got a hand tattoo that's uh, a little scary. This thing looks like another Illuminati symbol. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Yeah, things are getting weird. But there's one tattoo of his that stands out the most. And he posted about it on Instagram. On his left arm, Kyrie has a Friends tattoo. Yeah, like the, uh, the sitcom show, Friends. He went on to caption the picture saying, I mean, what can I say? I'm a fan of the show. And for some reason, this tattoo became such a big deal, even Jimmy Kimmel asked him about it. You also have a tattoo, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm not, of the Friends television show logo on your body. Yeah, Where is the, the tattoo? It's on my left uh, <laughs> forearm right here. <laughs> Why? Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Why do you have this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, one who isn't a Friends fan, and then, you, know, and then you really are a Friends fan. And then, uh, 
Secondly, uh, one of my best friends, or two of my best friends, we have uh, tattoos together. Oh, so. your best friend? You know what, man? I guess Kyrie's got a point. You love a show that much, might as well get it tatted and make all your friends do it too. Happy to see Kyrie is a good influence. I mean, at least he didn't keep his tattoos a secret. The NBA itself? They've been keeping a lot of secrets. Like the league already having players train for a four point line, or that women have actually played in the NBA. Oh, you want to hear more about that? Well, click on this video right here. These. Oh, that's crazy. Some people are crazy. That's just. What's your Kyrie with the <laughs> Illuminati? Gotta like, subscribe. Yeah, I like making these NBA videos. They're pretty cool.